everyone, Shira here. Last week, Nefesh Nefesh hosted a seminar to teach the general rules of the road here in Israel and how they differ from those abroad. The two hour recording of this event is probably on the Nefesh Nefesh website. I'll include a link to that in the description box below as soon as I have it. In the meantime, feel free to enjoy this much shortened version of all things that you need to know about driving in Israel. Here's a quick list of all things that we're gonna to discuss today. I know it looks like a lot, and I really hope that we can get it all in in under 10 minutes. There are two signs whose shape is recognized internationally, the stop sign and the yield sign, also known as right of way. The stop sign, as you all know, is octagonal and the yield is an upside down triangle. So aside from the stop sign and the yield sign, there are three main categories of signs. First, you have warning signs. These signs are triangle shaped with a red border and a black and white symbol. They indicate a warning about something that's gonna come up. For example, roundabout ahead or canal crossing. Regulatory signs are circle, also with the red border. These indicate something that you have to do. For example, speed limits are regulatory signs, as well as no entry and no U-turns. You should be forewarned that not all regulatory signs need to cross through them in order to signify something that is forbidden. A couple great examples of these kind of signs, the close to all vehicle sign, as well as this sign, the no car sign. The third type of sign are information signs. Like the name says, these signs give you information, such as roundabout to let you know that you are at a roundabout, or highway to let you know that you're on a highway. There are two ways to cancel out an instruction given by a street sign, either a black cross through the sign or an intersection. But there's only one sign that is not canceled by an intersection, and that is the residential neighborhood sign, which looks like this. Next, let's talk about the traffic light. The traffic light in Israel looks just as exactly the same as everywhere else in the world. Red, yellow, and green lights. But there are slight differences to what all the lights mean. Let's start with red. Just like everywhere else in the world, it means stop, don't move. After the red light, you have red and yellow together. You also can't move on this light, but you should be slowly releasing the brake and getting ready for the green light, which means go, but only when the intersection is clear, of course. This is important because you can get a ticket if you're driving on green and you collide with somebody who is driving on red. Then you have the flashing green light. I believe it's three flashes in three seconds, so this means that if you're close, you can probably make it through, so hit the gas. The way I think of it is treating it like a normal North American yellow light. But in Israel, when the light is yellow, you should know that you are not gonna make it, so you should hit that brake fast. And of course, after yellow, you have red, and that means stop. There's also a flashing yellow light, which we also have in Toronto, which means that the traffic light is out of order, so be careful. And of course, the traffic light lesson comes a really important lesson that I must point out to all foreign drivers. You are not allowed to turn right on a red light. The next topic we're gonna to discuss are speed limits. Speed limits in Israel are in kilometers per hour, and they're displayed on a black and white circular sign enclosed by a red border, like this. There are three types of roads in Israel, city roads, intercity roads, and highways. And the speed limits of each of these roads, unless otherwise noted, are in a city, 50 kilometers an hour, intercity, 80, unless there's a barrier between the two directions, in which case the speed limit goes up to 90. And then there's highways, where the minimum speed is 55 and the maximum is 110. In Israel, there are only four highways. You have Shar Hagai Tel Aviv, Ayalon, Kvish Shesh, um, Highway 6, and Ashdod Tel Aviv. All other big roads that you'll come across that you would think are highways are actually considered intercity roads, and thus the speed limit is 80, or 90 if there's a barrier. Um, I should also probably note that you can drive 10% faster than the speed limit without getting a ticket, unless there's a camera, of course. Lines on the road. The solid white line separates between two-way traffic, and of course, you're not allowed to cross it. Dotted white lines separate lanes on a road, so you can cross them, of course, to switch lanes. Yellow lines mark the side margin, and double yellow lines for, that form a separate lane are exclusive for public transportation, like buses and taxis. You cannot drive in this lane unless you need it to make a right-hand turn. You might have noticed in Israel that most of the curbs are painted with the colors red, white, blue, yellow, and gray. These lines on the curbs are used to mark parking regulations. The red and white lines, the Canada curbs, means no stopping. The blue and white lines, the Israel curbs, mean that you need a parking permit to park there and that you can buy those from a nearby machine. The red and yellow lines, the Spanish curbs, mark parking spaces that are reserved for public transportation, like buses and taxis. The red and gray lines, residence parking, and plain gray means free parking. Now let's talk about right of way when you get to the intersection. And here, things are a little bit different in Israel. When you're at an intersection, you can see the shape of the other car's sign to know if he's supposed to stop or yield, which essentially means the same thing. When you both have to stop, you need to remember, the driver on the right has right of way, 
even if he's turning left. Also, in a traffic circle, the right of way is given to cars that are already in the circle. So you should kind of be careful because you might be stuck there for like forever. So continuing on the topic of intersections, there are two places where you can stop at an intersection, either at the solid white line or at the end of the curb. If there's a crosswalk but no white line, and a crosswalk is indicated by white stripes across the road, you're supposed to stop first for the pedestrian who's crossing the road, and only then inch forward over the crosswalk and stop at the end of the curb. So yes, you might have to stop twice. Most of the time, whether or not you're allowed to park is indicated by painted lines on the curb by the side of the road, as we discussed previously. On top of that, parking is also indicated by a couple of signs. This top sign means parking permitted. There may be a yellow sign below listing the rates. Other sign means no parking, and you can get a ticket, and it's probably very expensive. In terms of drinking and driving, the blood alcohol percent cannot exceed 0.05. In terms of talking and driving, it's absolutely forbidden to talk on your phone while you're driving, unless you're using a wireless headset or the Bluetooth car speaker thingy. When there are emergency vehicles, you only have to merge to the right if their siren is sounding. Otherwise, continue driving as normal. On intercity roads, all vehicles must have their headlights turned on between November 1st and March 31st of the following year. Okay, when you're driving, you are required by law to have three things. Driver's license, registration, and bituachova, compulsory motor insurance. This covers everyone, be it the driver, the passengers, the people outside the vehicle, everyone. There's also additional insurance called sadgimel, third-party insurance, which covers your car and the car that you hit. By law, you're not required to have third-party insurance, but really, it's for your own good. What to do in a collision? In Israel, police are not involved in car crashes unless there are injuries. In a case of a collision involving personal injury, call the police by dialing 100, and then don't move your car from the side of the collision until the police officer gives the go-ahead. And here's some tip that every Olechada should know. No matter whose fault this accident was, never sign that it was your fault. Trade insurance information and phone numbers, whatever, with the other driver. But as long as you don't admit that it was your fault, a lawyer can get you out. All right, so I think that's it on this topic. If you found it informative, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with people who you know who could use this information. I do not claim by any means to be an extrovert driver. I've only been driving for just seven years. But if you have any further questions or need any sort of clarification, or if you think that I made a mistake, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer. So take care, drive safe, and I will see you next time. Thanks again for watching! You can click here to watch my previous vlog, probably one of my best, so you might not want to miss out. Click on the squares below to either watch all my vlogs, check out my channel page, or subscribe to my channel to be the first to find out when I upload something new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.